Hey everyone, welcome back to the Lions from Lambs YouTube channel and welcome to another video lesson. I'm Rob Malone. Today, I'm continuing the math lesson series. Now in the last lesson, we learned about place value. In this lesson, we're going to learn about one of the many tools or manipulatives that are available to help your child get a concrete understanding of place value in addition to being a great resource for actually performing math operations. And I'm talking about base 10 blocks. Base 10 blocks are one of the most powerful math tools because they give children a concrete visual of the values represented in a given number. When children learn math, most are best served by learning concrete images first, then moving on to pictorial or picture math on paper, and then when they have a firm grasp of those strategies, moving on to the abstract with numbers and algorithms. Base 10 blocks can be used to learn addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. We'll go over the blocks themselves and what each different type of block represents. Now we won't get into actual operations such as addition or subtraction in this lesson, but each math operation will be covered in future lessons. For now, the important thing is your child gains a solid understanding of the base 10 system itself before trying to actually implement it. So base 10 blocks are called that because they represent the base 10 numerical system. And this is also known as the decimal system. So in this system, each place value represents a power of 10. Now the blocks are used as visual aids. They help students understand the concept of place value and perform arithmetic operations, addition, subtraction, and so forth. So the blocks themselves include units, which stand for the ones, rods, which stand for tens, flats, which stand for hundreds, and cubes, which stand for thousands. And each of these corresponds to a power of 10, and that's why it's called the base 10. That emphasizes the foundational role of the number 10 in our decimal system. If you look here at the the unit, you see that it's a small little yellow square. But if you take that unit and look at against the rods, you'll see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten little squares, the equivalent size of the ones unit. And that's why that is a ten rod with a value of ten. Similarly, if you take the 10 rod, which is 10 individual units together, and you look at the hundreds, you flat, you have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. That's where the hundreds come in. And then if you wanted to go to the thousands and have a look, you'll see these are, because it's three-dimensional, this is 100 flat and you would see that there are actually 10 hundred flats in a thousand. That's how the base 10 blocks represent the values of the numbers and place values that we're going to be dealing with in math. That's why they're very helpful when you're trying to do math problems. Okay, so if we look at one unit, now we've already discussed one unit has a value of one. So now if we take, for example, four units, four units, one, two, three, four, they have a value of exactly four. Okay. Now if we look at a rod, one rod has a value of 10. So then if we took three rods, that would have a value of 10 plus 10 plus 10, which equals 30. So when we see three rods together, it's 30, or four rods would be 40, or 550. 
And just the same, if we look at one flat, that has a value of 100. So then if we have two flats, they have a value of 200. Now I'm not going to do thousands because I'm sticking with three digits for the most part in these early lessons, but basically it works the same. Two cubes would have a value of 2,000, three cubes, 3,000, and so on. But let's look at a real world example here with our old friend from, la from the last lesson, the number 125. Now in the previous lesson, we represented this number pictorially by using dots. We use a single dot for each value of one in each place value. And so when we had five in the five, the digit five in the ones place, we put five dots. The digit two in the tens place, because that has a value of 20, we put 20 dots. And then in the hundreds place, we know we had a value of 100, so we put 100 dots, and we had to stretch that box way out. So this time, we're going to represent the number or the value of 125, and we're going to use our base 10 blocks. If we take the ones place first, the digit 5 with a value of 5 is represented by five units. That is the same value as the five digit that was already there. In the tens place, the digit two, which we know has a value of 20, is represented in base 10 blocks by two rods, which have a value of 20. And finally, when we look at the hundreds place, the digit 1, which because it's in the hundreds place, has a value of 100, that gets represented by 1 flat. So that's our number, 125, represented by base 10 blocks. And that's how base 10 blocks work. They are a, a good visual to actually look and get a concrete representation of the actual values in a given number. So you see, base 10 blocks are a powerful way to help children visualize the values in math. When we move on to actually solving equations, the blocks help kids quickly gain an understanding of what's actually happening in a math problem, especially when get, we get into the concept of regrouping, which is always a tough one for kids to learn at first. Now, I'd recommend getting your child a set of base 10 blocks, like this one. They can be purchased at any educational store or even online. Now, there are also plenty of websites that have virtual base 10 blocks on which your child can manipulate the blocks on the screen. I hope this video has provided some value regarding base 10 blocks. I highly recommend becoming familiar with them as your child will almost certainly be using them in school. Lessons covering the actual use of them in addition and subtraction, as well as multiplication and division, will be coming soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the future lessons. Until next time, take care.